story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good evening and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Ebulomo Adekunle in a major story. Federal government says the Civilian Joint Task Force of Volunteer Youth have arrested eight suspected terrorists, including two suspected suicide bombers. Also in this program, Labour Party endorses President Kudluk Jonathan as its presidential candidate for the general elections. Ministerial confirmation of Musili of Anikoro divides the Senate along party lines. Saudi Arabia's human rights record marks a diplomatic row that has led to the translation of two countries. Members of the local vigilance group in Medjugorje have arrested eight suspected terrorists, including two suspected suicide bombers around the custom area of the city. Coordinator of the National Information Center, Michael Mary, said at a news conference in Abuja that the bomb suspects confessed that they were given the bomb by one Hassan Maidoya of Custom Area. Omeri also called on the citizenry to be alert and more security conscious in view of renewed Boko Haram attack on soft target. Equally, field reports indicate the determination of our troops to clear the entire zone of the present presence of Boko Haram and its menace in the short while. At this point, we, will, we also wish to commend the efforts of our allies from Chad and Niger, as well as Cameroon, who have put in, in place measures to cut off the supply lines of the terrorists. And it, it is hoped that the unfolding regional cooperation will hasten the total defeat, defeat and extermination of the Boko Haram group in Nigeria and the sub-region. Finally, latest reports from Borno State indicate that about eight people were arrested today around custom area in Maiduguri by men of the civilian JTF following the interrogation of two teenage suspected bombers who confessed that they were given the bomb by one Hassan Maiduguri of custom area to plant somewhere in Maiduguri metropolis. The suspects are now being interrogated by security agents. This is a growing example of uh, civilian volunteer support. The federal government says there is no evidence that ISIS operatives are collaborating with Boko Haram in the country. This is in spite of an audio message released by the insurgents in which their leader, Abu Bakr Shekau, pledged allegiance to the ISIS leadership. Coordinator of the Information Center, Michael Maria, however, says the authorities would not treat the claim with levity. 
The Oyo State Police Commanders want criminal-minded citizens to desist from crime or to face the wrath of the law in due succession. The State's Commissioner of Police, Mohamed Katsina, made this declaration following the arrest of a seven-man gang responsible for the kidnap of a 78-year-old citizen from his residence in the state. He went further to say no criminal will go unpunished under his watch. Omotaya Law has more. <laughs> where an innocent 70-year-old man was kept for one week. He has only this one and this pillow until rescue came his way. Adebo Walio Motosho, a 78-year-old kidnapped victim who was recently rescued from this remote hideout located in an area called Ajia, says life makes a new meaning to him, having survived the horrific experience of the kidnappers who demanded $1 million ransom on his life. I was with two other chiefs talking when they came in with gun and everything. And after they dealt, they took me by the, my collar and said, you follow us. I put me in the car and drove and landed my feet so I wouldn't know which way. I stayed about three or four days in one place before bringing me here. The gang, unaware of the police on their trail, confessed to have been involved in the kidnap business for years with operations in Lagos, Potakot, and other parts of the country. Leader of the gang, an indigenous of Awe in Oyo State, and the mother of three, B.C. Babalola, a.k.a. Vivian, says a share from the over 5 million naira initial sum collected was 750,000 naira, adding that the kidnap mission was introduced to her by her boyfriend, who is the second in command of the gang? I didn't know the man. I know even know. I know even there. I was since all this. Carry the man or to do or to kidnap. Uh, right to kidnap to yes. so do what to the to, man? To carry the man. To kidnap. Or okay. Carry. Kid, uh, kidnap. kidnap. Yeah. The commissioner of police in the state, Mohammed Castina, stated that a special anti-robbery squad commenced investigation as soon as it got wind of the kidnap incidents, which climaxed to success after a fierce gun battle with the gang who still has two of its members still at large after sustaining severe bullet shorts. He, however, called on residents to report any suspected case of bullet wounded victims for further investigation. Or your state command will never and can never be a breeding ground for miscreant. They tried to test my might, and this is their real result. The state police command restated its commitment to read all your state of criminal and violent activities with a pledge to safeguard lives and property. On Matayu Alo, Core TV News, Ibadan. One time Minister of Defense Theophilus Danjima has held a closed door meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan at the presidential villa Abuja. The meeting lasted barely 15 minutes, but Danjima was not prepared to reveal details. He told State House correspondents that the agenda of the meeting was confidential. Danjima added that he was at the presidential villa to find out developments in the country, having just returned from a foreign trip. The national leadership of the Labour Party says it is throwing its weight behind the re-election bid of President Goodluck Jonathan. According to the national chairman of the party, Abdukadru Abdusalam, the choice of Jonathan as the party's presidential candidate is due to his sterling performance in office. We'll bring you details of that report later. The presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Mohamed Buhari, has again dispelled suggestions that he is a religious fanatic. He insisted that nobody can impose Sharia law on the entire country. Buhari said this at a town hall meeting in Kaduna, which attracted a cross-section of Muslim and Christian clerics. The APC presidential candidate was represented by his running mate, Yemi Oshibajo. Several denominations, and it is so also in Islam, and so also amongst Muslims. There are different schools, different schools of thought, different schools, and, and it's difficult to regulate them under one body or one set of bodies. So we have to keep regulating everybody under the law. The law of the land is that you have freedom of conscience and freedom of religion, but you are not allowed to prevent other people from practicing their religion. You are not allowed to use violence. If you do, you infringe the law of the land. What is important is that we must create a level playing field so that if anybody offends 
of whatever religion he is brought to justice. That is very, very important. The only regulation we can have for religion is the law of the land. The constitution is clear, and we must, and we must ensure we enforce the laws of the land. The People's Democratic Party presidential campaign team claims that the presidential flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress, Mohamed Buhari, plans to introduce same-sex marriage in Nigeria. This, the party says, was part of the assurances Buhari made to the West during his recent visit to the United Kingdom. PDP also noted that the APC is planning to run a damaging documentary targeted at maligning the reputation of President Goodluck Jonathan, his wife, and the Petroleum Resources Minister, Dizani Alison Madwike. Per Samuel has more. Like previous interface with the media, the spokesman for PDP's campaign team has a lot to say on the APC presidential candidate, Mohamed Buhari. He claims the opposition candidate is considering scrapping all anti-gay legislations. Fanny Kaude alleged that Buhari has already assured the West of his readiness to back same-sex marriage in Nigeria. The second issue we want to touch on today is the shameful proposition that was made to General Muhammadu Buhari by the representatives of a number of Western governments when he was in the United Kingdom for a prolonged stay. He had appealed to them for support and to get their endorsement. He had talks with the representatives of at least four Western countries. The leaders of those countries made an offer to General Muhammadu Buhari, and we are reliably informed that he has put the offer under consideration. The proposition and offer was that if he was prepared to support legislation in Nigeria to allow same-sex marriage, and if he was prepared to repeal the anti-gay laws in Nigeria, they will, in return, endorse, support, and fund him, initially covertly and eventually publicly at the right time. Instead of outrightly rejecting these offers and spurning this proposition, to our utter shock and consternation, General Buhari apparently refused to rule it out and has put the matter under consideration. Instead of him to say no, he assured them that he would consider these two things. He also spoke on APC's decision to lodge a complaint against the First Lady, Patience Jonathan, at the International Criminal Court for allegedly inciting violence against its members. The PDP spokesman insists that if anybody is to appear before the ICC, it should be the APC presidential candidates. Their threat to take the First Lady to the ICC is not only absurd, but it is also nothing but the empty and boastful ranting of a perfidious, desperate, decaying, and dying political party. And such threat will amount to nothing. The truth is that if anybody is a candidate for the ICC, it is certainly not Dame Patience Jonathan, but rather General Muhammadu Buhari himself. We say this because, firstly, he needs to answer questions about his role in the July 29, 1966 coup and the mass murder of about 300 Igbo army officers, including a serving head of state, that took place that night. The PDP also expressed concern over an alleged plan to air a documentary about the private lives of President Jonathan, the First Lady, and the Minister of Petroleum Resources. The Special Operations and Intelligence Wing of my directorate has been reliably informed that the opposition is planning to air a documentary about the private lives of President Jonathan, the First Lady, and the Minister of Petroleum Resources. The documentary is riddled with falsehood, and it is vulgar, smutty, cheap, shameful, and salacious. The PDP spokesman called on the opposition to be real in their campaign, rather than use propaganda to attract public sympathy. Pius Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. <laughs>
It's the Core TV primetime news. We'll go on a break and when we return, we'll be returning with details of the division in the Senate over ministerial confirmation of Musli Obanikoro. Don't go away. Dose of Scott's Emotion, which combines omega 3, calcium, vitamins A and D, supports the healthy development of your child's brain and body. Scott's Emotion promotes active minds and strong immunity in growing children. New Scott's Orange Flavor Multivitamin Emotion. Thank you for being there with us. And in case you're just joining us, it's the Core TV Primetime News, and here are the stories that made our headlines. The federal government says the Civilian Joint Task Force of Volunteer Youth have arrested eight suspected terrorists, including two suspected suicide bombers. Labour Party endorses President Goodluck Jonathan as its presidential candidate for the general elections. Ministerial confirmation of Musili Obanikoro divides the Senate along party lines. And for more on Core TV news, you can visit our social media platforms. On Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. Our Twitter handle at Core TV News MG. And on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Core TV, let us face the news. The All Progressives Congress presidential campaign organization has described Niger State's governor Babangida Liu as an incurable liar. It said in a statement signed by its director of media and publicity, Gad Bashew, that the claims by Governor Liu that the APC presidential candidate, Muhammadu Buhari, signed a single tenure pact is a figment of his imagination. Shew said that Aliyu has made a bad career of misguided claims of this nature in which he represents himself as a clairvoyant fly perching on the walls of political meetings across the country. The campaign spokesman also dismissed Governor Liu's insinuation as the outburst of a mischief maker bent on stoking division and disaffection in the APC. He added that the party is not surprised at his comment, especially as he has also been at the center of controversy of being in possession of a letter in which his party's presidential candidate signed a one-term pact with governors of the ruling party. The Senate has cleared former Minister of State for Defense, Musili Obanikoro, to return to the federal cabinet in spite of stiff opposition from senators elected on the platform of the All Progressives Congress. The opposition lawmakers raised objections ranging from pending court cases to a petition lodged by all three senators from Lagos State, but Senate President David Mack did not budge. Senate Mark, Senator Mack put the issue to a voice vote which went in favor of Obanikoro and ABC senators staged a walkout. The first shot was fired by the APC lawmakers as soon as it was time to screen the four nominees listed for screening. Senator Bokola Saraki raised the initial point of order which was followed in quick succession by five others. The objection to the screening of Obanikoro ranges from a pending court case to a petition filed by all three senators representing Lagos State. A recollection of our colleagues, I think last week when we met, under the uh, executive session, you did make a point that we will come back this week and before we could go further to discuss the issue of the remaining four ministers, that, 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 you did say, and I think I heard very clearly, that you will call a meeting of the executive session before we go into this session. And I think we are deviating from that word that you said at that moment. 
Mr. President, we have four nominees. One from Digawa State, Mrs. Lawan. Two from River State. The third one, Senator Danlami Ikenya from Taraba State. Four on the list, Senator Mohamed Musiliu Obanikoro. Mr. President, as I stand before you, the is matter is in court relying largely on order 14 of the rules which talks about custom and precedence number one during the sixth senate during the sixth senate mr president and my witness on the floor of this senate will be the senator from kogi state senator smart senator smart government of national unity two senators opposed the nomination of a minister and the custom of this Senate, it was rejected. But one after the other, the Senate president shut down the objections and secured a breathing space for other nominees to be screened. We are not, uh, we are not reconsidering anything. We are carrying on with the screening. He's, he has moved that motion, so nothing. There is nothing there to support the order that you've come up with. So, so, so unfortunately, unfortunately, like those before you, I also rule you out of order. When Obani Kuru was finally invited into the chambers, minority whip raised the dilemma of the bar and go tradition and senator's petition against ministerial nominees. We should not, at the heat of the moment, forget our tradition and our decorum. I'm telling everybody this. We are free to hear our view. At the end of the day, whatever the majority wants may go through. But minority, minority, minority must be allowed. Minority must also be had, even if for the purpose of records. The Senate president subjected the options before the lawmakers to a voice vote, which favored Obani Koro. Is it the wish of the Senate that Senator Obani Koro should be allowed to take a bow and go? Yes. Those, those against say no. Yes. The eyes of it. PC senators staged a walkout in protest, but the Senate went ahead to clear the former minister to return to the federal cabinet. Meanwhile, the Senate has said that many of the senators opposed to Musili Obanikoro over a pending court case have cases before the anti-graft agency. Senate spokesman Yinaya Baribe said at a news conference after plenary that in spite of the pending matters, the senators had not been barred from performing their legislative duties. He also insisted that the Senate did not breach any of its rules in clearing the former senator. Well, what we know as a matter of fact is that there were allegations against Senator Musli Obanikoro. But in our law and in the Constitution of Nigeria, anything that is a mere allegation that is not in any way a court decision is nothing but a mere allegation. And every man in Nigeria and every woman and every citizen of Nigeria is deemed to be innocent until proven guilty. And even the senators who uh, addressed the press conference and spoke about the qualification or non-qualification of Senator Musli or Banikoro are uh, enjoying this privilege because some of them have EFCC cases and they are still in the Senate because of this privilege of being innocent until proven 
guilty. And so they cannot go to a press conference and try to convict somebody when the person has not been convicted in a court of law. And they cannot enjoy that privilege themselves and sit in this Senate and then turn around and now say that somebody else cannot enjoy that privilege. And the laws of Nigeria is very clear. You are innocent until you are proven guilty. And that is what played out on the floor of the Senate. And the Senate, in its wisdom, having known that this is the law of Nigeria and this is the constitution of Nigeria, and that every Nigerian is entitled to this privilege, went ahead to do what it is supposed by law to do, which is confirmation of somebody that is on the floor of the Senate who has not been convicted of anything. After staging a walkout, the APC caucus of the Senate addressed a news conference where they accused the leadership of the upper chamber of impunity. The federal lawmakers argued that we wonder, there were enough grounds we really to turn down the nomination of the former minister of state We want to democracy in this country or we want to destroy this democracy. I have said his action is a breach. He should have stayed to clear him, himself. <coughs> the matter is in court, and one of the rules of the Senate is what? Where a matter is in court, Senate cannot deliberate on it. <coughs> of course, it is true that this Senate also has a tradition that a former senator coming as a nominee should be allowed to just take a bow and to leave. But this is subject to certain conditions. There is the presumption of what integrity exhibited by the senator outside the chambers as well. It is not something that is just restricted to a serving senator. When you leave chambers, it is expected that you are a good ambassador of the Senate, and therefore your conduct must be exemplary. We cannot so, say so respecting this issue. So we have an upcoming election, and one wonders, what is the rush in trying to bring back a former minister of defense who has been alleged and clips shown that he compromised his office. It then shows that you oppose card readers, you oppose permanent voters card, you oppose everything that will make for a credible election, and you want to bring back somebody who, who is alleged to have been tainted by all evidence. Somebody <coughs> asks, where do we go? We are Democrats, and we are patriots. Yeah. We are fighting for our country, but we are fighting for our country under the rule of law. So we allow the court case to go is so hard. What the Senate has done today can be nullified by court. And if it's nullified by court, that screaming stands null and void. Okay. As Nigerians get ready for the rescheduled general elections, Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola has appealed to President Goodluck Jonathan to distance himself from hate campaigns made in his favor. Fashola made the appeal while receiving the chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, Chidi Odinkalu, at his residence in Marina. Abiolo Luwali has more on the story as presented from our studio. As the rescheduled general elections get closer, Political gladiators have continued to hull out inciting comments and hate speech against the various opponents, an act that have continued to attract condemnation from analysts. The recent visit of the chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, G.D. Odikalu, to Gabna Fashila is to further converse against hate campaign. Odikalu says it is paramount that political actors advised the supporters against churning out inciting statements against their opponents so as to stem the tide against violence before, during, and after the general elections. So that thinking together, we can actually uh, learn what's happening here. And uh, our desire is that sometime next week we'll meet with the principals, the president and General Buhari, who is the presidential candidate of the all progressive Congress, and we want to take this message and see how we can ensure that, one, we have credible elections. elections. These elections are necessary, Nigerians want them, and they have to happen. Secondly, that when they happen, after they've happened, the country can pull together, that leadership can ensure that the country pulls together to confront the problems that challenge us. Economy, uniting our country, um, 
addressing our security challenges, which are existential, and, this, and, and regaining our place in the international community. In his response, Gabna Fashila called on President Jonathan to caution his supporters against the use of hate campaign against his opponents, saying such step by Jonathan will greatly douse the current political tension in the country. And the president must speak up and reassure Nigerians that this country will be safe, whatever the outcome of the results. That's his primary duty. And it is not enough to say it or to sign a peace accord, but to act it. And that is why all of the commentators are saying, well, he says the right thing, but his body language doesn't quite rhyme with what he says. But people are not foolish. If the president wants to campaign in any state 24 hours a day, he's allowed to. Nobody can stop him if he has the energy to do it. But there are some things that he must publicly dissociate himself from, like his wife's speech, he must. He must disown them. And his leadership will be defined by whether he does it himself, convincingly, or whether he has his aides to go and say it. With less than a month to the general elections, common prayer on the leaps of Nigerians, according to political watchers, is free, fair and credible polls. The Sultan of Sokoto and Chairman of Northern Nigerian Traditional Rulers Council, Abubakar Sahad, has cautioned politicians against overheating the polity. The Sultan, who spoke at the opening ceremony of an emergency meeting in Kaduna, expressed concern over the spate of hate campaigns between members of the All Progressives Congress and the People's Democratic Party. He argued that there was no basis for any individual, political parties or candidates to see the forthcoming elections as a do-or-die affair. According to him, people must be allowed to cast their votes without fears or intimidation regardless of party affiliation. On reasons for the meeting, the Sultan of Sokoto said emirs and other traditional rulers deemed it necessary to hold an emergency session to discuss ways of ensuring peaceful, free and fair elections. The Sultan, who also noted that a similar meeting was held ahead of the 2011 general elections, insisted that the traditional rulers have a role to play in supporting a peaceful and violence-free election. The National Youth, Corps, Youth Service Corps says a total of 134,000 core members will be participating in the 2015 general elections to be conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission in Nigeria. The Director General of NYC, Johnson Olaumi, said this in Benin while speaking to newsmen on the preparedness of core members ahead of the elections. He also told politicians to desist from violence. Our correspondent has more on this report presented from our studio. The Director General, while speaking on the readiness of the core members for the election, says he is committed to ensuring the safety of core members during and after the general elections. He added that the welfare of the members, especially their safety and security, remains paramount as no core member will be compelled to serve in states under emergency. We call that um, enrollment or registration of uh, core members in taking part in the election was done uh, last year between uh, October and November. As at the end of registration of core members, we had a total of uh, 168,000 registered to take part in the election. But um, because of uh, the postponement, a badge of core members had to pass out uh, in February, February 19 to be precise, about 34,000 of them. So, effectively, that leaves us with a total of 134,000 core members that are going to take part in the elections. He called on politicians to desist from violence against core members deployed as ad hoc staff in this election, pointing out that a comprehensive measure has been mapped out against such attempts. All politicians that we, as much as possible, we have trained these core members and we have uh, given them all they required. We have sensitized them, we have given them manuals that they need to go through 
even uh, the implications of any misconduct during the elections. So on our side, we have prepared it. But let me see this opportunity to call on all poli uh, political leaders, politicians, that they should please uh, plead with their supporters not to offer violence to these core members. They are just out there serving their fatherland. He however added that the NYSC has also introduced a Hope Alive program to boost the welfare and security of core members. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Atahiru Jega, has charged the 37 resident electoral commissioners and other officers of the commission to remain focused and resilient in delivering the best elections. Atahiru Jega gave the charge at the opening of a closed meeting with the RACs at the INEC headquarters in Abuja. He restated the Commission's resolve to examine the gaps and all the concerns raised on the card readers in some quarters in the few weeks preceding the elections scheduled for March 28th and April 11th. The review of outstanding issues on the distribution of permanent voter cards, relocation of polling units were also on the agenda of the meeting. We'll take another break now, and when we return, it will be with business spots and other stories outside Nigeria. Please stay with us. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. And now to business. Nigeria will enforce the repatriation of dollar proceeds from exports and is planning to sanction those not complying, Central Bank Governor Godwin Emefiele told an online newspaper on Tuesday. According to Emefiele, policymakers are looking at exporters to ensure hard currency liquidity within Nigeria pondering sanctions against exporters who fail to repatriate proceeds and funnel them back into the official market within the stipulated 90-day limit. Emefiele said such of much of the pressure on the Naira over the past year was due to activities of importers and exporters, the former front-loading purchases of hard currency, while the latter were hoarding their overseas cash earnings. In February, the central bank introduced trading rules under which banks will be able to purchase foreign exchange only if they have a prior order from a corporate customer, such as a fuel importer or foreign mobile phone company looking to repatriate profits or dividends. The Nigeria currency, Naira, waned marginally by 0.01% Peg YTD return at minus 7.33% as the interbank rate relatively stable at 197 Naira, while mid price settles at 199 Naira 50, 15 Kobo. Nigerian interbank market advanced by 0.63% just as the call money and one month tenors increased by 1.65%. And 0.25%, while the three and six month tenors advanced by 14.78% to settle at 14.08% and 16.08% respectively. Meanwhile, there was a mixed reaction amidst the Treasury bills instrument as average reeled across tenure marginally appreciated by 0.02%. Meanwhile, the bond index witnessed an upsurge of 0.77% at the close of today's trading to peg the index level at 853.94. However, average yield across the bond instruments declined by 0.21% to settle at 15.16%. And now let's join Sabena Izoku for the stock market report for today. Court TV News Stock Market Report. 
Hello there and welcome to the Stock Market Report segment with me, Sabena Izuku. Equity transaction on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today as the Nigerian All Shares Index depreciated by 1.55% to close at 30,869.17 basis points. The market capitalization decreased to close at 10.30 trillion naira. In all, the total volume of 518.8 million units of shares valued at 3.8 billion naira were exchanged in 5,460. Nine deals. Ashakem Simit stopped the gainers chart to close at 89.79 cobble with 89 cobble price difference, followed by Equitrans National Incorporated, Simit Company of Northern Nigeria, Mobile, and Custody and Island PLC. On the flip side, 40 odd top the losers chart, followed by Nigerian Brewers, Con or Stambic IBTC Holdings, and Guaranteed Trust Bank. Meanwhile, UBA Capital topped the traders chart, followed by International Energy Insurance Company, Transcore, UBA, and Guarantee Trust Bank. Just before we wrap up the stock market report, here's the currency trade for today. I am Sabana Isoku. Court TV News Stock Market Report. Now we'll go over to Emmanuel Ezekiel, who brings us a summary of the happenings in the world of sports. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to Sports. The National Assembly's Committee on Sports has issued a seven-day ultimatum to the Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, to give a detailed account of how funds realized from other sources besides the federal government were spent in the 2014 year, requesting for full disclosure. Present at the House was the NFF board and management staff, led by Vice President Shei Akiyomi and General Secretary Musa Amadu. Committee Chairman... Godfrey Aligaya, while rejecting the 2014 budget appraisal submitted by the Federation, observed that NFF only touched on budgetary allocation it received from the federal government without mentioning how much it received from FIFA after the World Cup and sponsors, among other external grants. The Director General of the National Sports Commission, Honorable Binga Alegbeleye, also led other management staff of the NSE to appear before the House and was later cleared and took his leave. Meanwhile, the Nigerians on the 20 national side, the Flying Eagles, have qualified for the semi finals of the CAF on the 20 Youth Championship in Senegal after Wednesday's 4 1 win against Congo. Two, Taiwo Awoni produced a man of the match performance, scoring once and winning two penalties for the Flying Eagles. Ifai Matthew lashed onto Bernard Boulevard's pass and dispatched the ball after a great close control in the fifth minute of the game for Nigeria's second goal. Nigeria keeper Joshua Enaholo was red carded for a foul on Congo forward with Olon Leke Ojo coming in for Enaholo. The game was temporarily suspended for three minutes after the incident, leading to the red card as medics attended to the player and pended by the Nigerian keeper. Taiwo Awoni scored Nigeria's fourth goal in the 86th minute of the game. Coach Manu Garba's team now have six points from two games and set to play Cote d'Ivoire in their last group game on Saturday. Defending champions Nigeria's Ojo Onolakwa, Olajide Omotayo, and three other Nigerians, as well as three Egyptians, secured their places in the quarterfinal stage of the ongoing International Table Tennis Federation, IWTF, World Tour Lagos Open holding at the Molade Okoya Thomas Hall of the Teslim Balogun Stadium. Onolakpo, who succeeded number one, had an easy passage to the last eight as he overran compatriot Josh, Joshun Oladiro 11-4, 11-5, 11-6, while Italy based Omotaya also surmounted Michael Abayomi 11-6, 11-7, and 11-10 to set up a quarter final battle against compatriot. Akinwali Fagbamila, who had encountered, who had accounted for the next Sunday Komolafe in the round of 16 encounter. In the quarterfinal pairing, Onolakwa would battle Ogini, 
Other fixtures include Mabruk versus Fati, Omotai versus Fagbamila, and Ogundalo versus Magdi. And finally, in tennis, tennis star Andy Murray plans to work with Jonas Jogman next month with a view to the view to former one building finalist joining his coaching team full time. The 42 year old Sweet Jogman will assist French Cup Federation Cup captain Emilio Moresmo, who works with Murray for 20 weeks uh, last year. Jogman, former world number four, will replace Danny Ballet Vu as Murray's new assistant coach. Moresmo joined Murray in Indian Wells. This week, the first time they have been together at a tournament since Murray lost last month, Australian Open to Nova Djokovic. And with that tennis story, we come to the end of sports. Back to you, Ebo. You can now watch Core TV News Live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.coretvnews.com. Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24-hour news station. And now outside Nigeria, Sweden said it will cancel a defense agreement with Saudi Arabia worth billions of crowns to its industry after criticism of Riyadh's human rights record sparked a diplomatic row. Sweden's Social Democrat-led government, which came to power in October last year, has focused its foreign policy on human rights. On Monday, Saudi Arabia blocked Swedish Foreign Minister Margot Wallström from giving a speech to the League of Arab States in Cairo. A spokesman for Wallström said the decision stemmed from Sweden's criticism of Saudi Arabia's human rights record. The Arab League later agreed a resolution denouncing remarks by Wallström to the Swedish parliament. In February, Wallström told parliament Saudi Arabia violated women's rights and criticized the flogging of human rights activist and blogger Rav Badawi. She also called Saudi Arabia a dictatorship. And that's it on Core TV primetime news tonight. But before we go, a recap of our major stories. reported that federal government said the civilian joint task force of volunteered youth have arrested eight suspected terrorists including two suspected suicide bombers labor party has endorsed president good luck jonathan as its presidential candidate for the general elections Finally, ministerial confirmation of Musli Obanikoro divides the Senate along part lines. As the 2015 general elections draw near, play your part in ensuring the sustenance of the nation's democracy. Thanks so much for watching. I am Ebulomo Adekunli. Have a pleasant night rest.